Well, that's a very kind offer, Roy. Mike. And uh, you don't seem to have any other options, and time is getting on. Um, I don't think we can delay any longer. Um, if we could get started, please. Here. Yeah. Don't lose them. Don't worry, Mr Baldwin. I shall endeavour not to let you down. Best of luck, both of you. Remind me to make a note in my diary. Make some new friends. At least try and look a bit happy, will you? It is your wedding day. Right. <laughs> Under the circumstances today, but might it be more appropriate if I referred to you as Mike? Roy, today you can call me anything. Should we phone someone? No. Not till I know he's all right. I should have known something was wrong. No. I didn't come home last night. No, no, no. It's not your fault, Vic. This one's down to me. Uh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, come on, son. You know damn well what happened after the trial. Sure you wanted to leg it and start a new life somewhere else? What did I say, eh? <laughs> like Jim McDonald. No, you stay here, son. That's what I told him. I'll look after you. I'll protect you. Mm -hmm. Did a good job last night, didn't I? I wish... I wish you didn't have to go back. Mm. Me too. Would you struggle much if I uh, tied you up and kept you hostage? I wouldn't struggle at all. Oh, right. I think I've got a spare washing line under the sink. Mm -hmm. Hope it's one of them plastic ones. The rope one's really cut into your wrist. Yeah. Mm. I never thought I'd meet anybody like you. Maybe we should go back upstairs. Maybe we should just stay here. Mm. Repeat after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Michael Vernon Baldwin. To witness that I, Michael Vernon Baldwin. To take thee, Linda Sykes, to be my lawful wedded wife. To take thee, Linda Sykes, to be my lawful wedded wife. And I promise to love, cherish, honor and respect you for as long as we both shall live. And I promise to love, cherish, honour and respect you for as long as we both shall live. Now it's your turn. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Linda Sykes. To witness that I, Linda Sykes. Do take thee, Michael Vernon Baldwin, to be my lawful wedded husband. Do take thee. Michael Vernon Baldwin to be my lawful wedded husband and I promise to love cherish honor and respect you for as long as we both shall live and I promise to love cherish honor and respect you for as long as we both shall live it is now my great pleasure to pronounce you man and wife you may kiss the bride The doctor will explain everything to you. Red, you are. Mr. MacDonald? Yeah. Look, sorry about earlier on. We get used to it. Oh, my God. How's he done? 
He's lucky. Lucky you found him when you did. Another hour and you might not have made it. Is he gonna be okay? Yeah. He has severe bruising to the face and body. Seven broken ribs at the last count and most of his fingers have been broken too. He also has extensive internal injuries that suggest that he took quite a kicking while he was on the floor. We'll keep him in the high dependency unit for a bit longer, but it's really more of a precaution. It's going to be quite some time before he's back to full fitness, though. Like I said, he's a lucky man. I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Try not to tire him out. What Stephen needs now is rest. <laughs> Oh, Linda, you look lovely. Oh, you really do. Linda, you could pass the royalty in that book. Thanks. And thanks for coming. I'm chuffed you're here. Well, you need somebody to show up in front of, don't you? That's right. <laughs> hey, what happened to you, best man? Oh, you were either took sick. Oh. oh, posh weddings. They can make you feel like that sometimes. Oh, listen, let's have a group shot. How's the Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Then. What's going on? Mind the veil. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Oh, did you? Cheese. <laughs> Well, I can't find him. Nobody's seen him anywhere. What's wrong with that boy? You know how important this was to me. He pulls a stroke like this. Yeah, well, keep calm. He's probably in a toilet throwing up somewhere. <laughs> well, he better be. Because if he's not, I'll kill him when I find him. Yeah, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, my turn. It's a surprise. Oh, hey! Get off her. You're ruining your dress. <laughs> it looks like your car's gone anywhere. Yeah. All I have to worry about now is calming the mic down. How are you feeling? It's like I've been hit by a bus. Oh, at least your butterflies have gone. Fred! Where have you been? Very sorry. Road works on 1056. Oh. Have I missed out? No, not really. Come on, I'll get you to. Hi! Hi! You've got your best man's speech sorted yet. Speech. Oh, yeah. I've got a couple of jokes. The crackers. A bit blue mind. But you've got to get them laughing, man. You've got to start them laughing. Thank you. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Hey! I've just heard your Mars left you in the lurch. Yeah, and while you were fannying around on the motorway, I had Roy Cropper as my best man. Well, I'm very sorry. I was delivering your ex wife to Thurport. Ladies and gentlemen, the bride and groom will now take a tour of the grounds in their horse and carriage. Oh, oh. oh thank you. Oh. <laughs> Sir, your carriage away. The reception will begin in half an hour in the main function room. your doll. Don't try to talk now. You're going to be all right. Son, I need to know one thing from you. And I want you to try and let me know. I want you to tell me the truth. Did Quigley have anything to do with this? Shh. All right, Oak. Don't you worry your head now, son. I'll take care of everything. I'll be back to see you later. Thank you. See you later, man. Car keys. Hey? Car keys, you heard me. No. Vic, I've told you. I want your car keys and I want the address of Quigley while you're at it, okay? Don't you think we should let the police deal with this? Behave yourself, Vicar, and the police are the ones that let them off already. I know that. Yes. 
You heard me, I've told you. I was meant to protect him and I let him down. Now, I want the car keys and I want Quigley's address and I'd rather like them now. He lives in a flat. 45 lands down road. Now you're talking. Don't do anything stupid, eh? Stupid? I think you'll find Quigley's been a bit buck stupid. Me? What I'm going to do, that used to be called justice, my friend. I'll see you later. I asked him to do one thing. One simple thing. This is supposed to be our day. Yes, I know, and he's ruined it for you. Can't we just forget about Mark for a few hours? How can I forget about him? He's just humiliated me in front of everyone. Yeah, well, you're not going to change anything by ranting and raving. It's not easy. I trusted him. I mean, I know he can get a bit flaky at times, but I wanted him to be my best man, and he's let me down. I don't know why you were so surprised. Eh? All he ever does is let you down. And what's that supposed to mean? I'm agreeing with you, Mike. He's my son. And you were slagging him off. Well, I'm entitled to. And I'm not. No. Oh, this is nice, this is. Our first row. Right in the middle of me flaming romantic or strong carriage ride. Oi, and you, keep your eyes on the road. I never even had me breakfast. Yeah, well, at least we won't put any weight on. You feeling better? I feel much better if I knew what happened to Mark. Well, Mike, why don't we just cancel the reception and send out a search party? I'm sure if we got everybody out looking, we'd find him soon enough. I'm sorry, lad, but... Well, he's ruined everything for you, hasn't he? No, Mike, he hasn't. Because I won't let him. Why should he ruin my wedding day? As far as I'm concerned, the best man's still here. You know, you're absolutely right. So I'm going to stop moaning and concentrate on having a good time. How does that sound? That sounds great. Mm. Uh, just, just, just to put your mind at rest, I've prepared a few notes from his speech. I won't be making it too personal, just a few reflections appropriate to the occasion. Oh, yeah, right. Good. You were thinking of Isabel. Uh, was it so obvious? No, just a lucky guess. The why I was thinking about her today. Well, it's a wedding. We all have memories of weddings. I wasn't thinking about our wedding. I was wondering what they were going to have for lunch today. They were going to give her shepherd's pie. Isabel likes shepherd's pie. We don't have to stay if you're uncomfortable. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just, just being so comfortable and I'm so happy. That's because you're a caring, sensitive man. Do you think so? Yes, I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't have asked you. Abby? Oh, that's good. All right, I'll see you then, then. Turn up. Turn up. Kids are fine. Jack and Vera are taking them for a pizza. They'll be back about six. Good. Well, did you realise it's nearly four? We've only just got dressed. Oh, I can soon change that. Hey, you just want to put something in your tea this morning. It's not my fault that you're irresistible. I can't help myself. Well, we better make the most of it, because it all ends at six. It doesn't have to. Yes, it does. Unless you've won the lottery and you forgot to tell me. What? I... love you. Do you? Yes, I do. I love you too. Oh, good. <laughs> Well, that's the hard bit over with. <laughs> when are you going to move in? Are you serious? Deadly. Well, I don't want to go back. Well, there you are then. We could be happy here, I know we could. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the best man.
I, I, I won't keep you long. There's not a lot to say, really. Except what, what a magnificent wedding this is. Credit for which must go, I'm sure, to Linda for her good taste and organisational abilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I can't say that I know Mike uh, that well at all, or, or indeed his good lady wife, but I do know that their romance hasn't always met with universal approval. Not only is, is there the, well, the obvious difference in their ages, but also because when their relationship began, he was the successful, well-to-do businessman, and, and she was the lowly factory machinist. Because you, you see, Mike, I know from experience how cruel people can be when they don't approve. The funny looks, the raised eyebrow, those smiles that, that hide the, the nasty things they say behind your back. Sometimes it seems to me that people don't want to understand anything other than the norm. So I'd like to speak up for those of us who aren't normal. Those odd couples everywhere. Because what we know is that when you really love someone, nothing else really matters. No problem is too big, no obstacle too difficult to surmount. Now, there are people, probably in this room, who didn't think that Mike and Linda would get this far, but they have. And they have because they love each other. And that's what really matters. And it just goes to prove that uh, love can blossom in, in the most unlikely places. Uh, that, that, that's it. <clears throat> oh, oh, um, could you raise your glasses and toast the beautiful bride? Beautiful bride. Thank you, that, that's it. So, this is Emma. Yeah, it looks like. He looks in a pretty bad way, doesn't he? Can I help you? DC right. Are you your mate at Steve McDonald's? Um, yeah. I was the one that reported him missing. And I presume someone told you that we found him. Ambulance crew called us out. Said he took a pretty bad beating. Do you know anything about it? No, not really. What does not really mean? You'll have to ask Steve. Oh, we will. As soon as Doc says he's up to it. In the meantime, where's the coffee machine? Down the corridor, on the left. Cheers. What about our own school? We've got schools here. Yeah, but you've not got his friends and... It was my job. I know it's not much, but it's not bad money. Warren likes it in Blackpool. He's happy there. So you're turning me down? No. I want to be with you more than anything in the world. Right. Right. I'll move in with you. What about the twins? Yeah, them too. No, seriously, they haven't really got a social circle. There's nothing here they're really going to miss. Yeah, but you've got good friends. Yeah, and I'll miss them but not as much as I'll miss you if we don't do this. You really are serious. Yeah. It'll be a bit cramped at first, but we'll sell this place and then we'll get a bigger place in Blackpool. Well, what about work? Well, they'll need taxi drivers in Blackpool. I can clean windows. I can work in a building trade. I'll work. That's not the question. The thing is, will you have me? Yeah. I'll have you. <laughs> hey! Oh! Get out! Well, well, well. What's the matter, 
Quigley. Don't you like surprises, son? Oh, excuse me, with the loop. Oh. It was a beautiful speech. I was so proud of you, Roy. Well, I wouldn't have done it if it hadn't been for you. I don't know how you can feel sorry for Baldwin after the way he's treated you. I just don't like seeing people unhappy, that's all. You're a very special person. I've got so much loving you up. I almost feel guilty for keeping it to myself. Well, it, it's funny you should say that because I've been thinking. I mean, it's just something for us both to think about. I mean, I know it's just a dream, really, but I just can't seem to get the idea out of my head. What, what idea? I think it's spending so much time with Bethany, but I keep imagining what it'd be like if we had a baby. But we can't. I mean, it's not possible. I, I know, I know, but it doesn't hurt to imagine, does it? Thanks ever so much for today. I know we never started off as proper friends, but I don't know, I'm really grateful. You're the best, best woman a girl could have. And you're turning into a soppy cow. <laughs> I mean it. I couldn't have done this without you. Come here. What are you going to do about the car? I don't know. Cross that bridge when I come to it. Best of luck. Thanks. I suppose I better find me husband. Yeah. <laughs> You are making a very big mistake. Oh, no, Quigley, I'm making no mistake. It's your mistake for beating up my son and leaving him for dead. I never even touched Oh, so it wasn't you. What did you do? Get some of your mates to do for it? Didn't have the bottle to do it yourself? Oh, I... Come on, that was business. Oh. He grasped me up. So you're not denying it, I take it. Well, no, why should I? Look, he's the one who started this. Ask him. Ask him? Oh, I. Well, I'll tell you what I'll ask him. I'll ask him when he regains consciousness. That's what I'll ask him. Look, this is lovely to see you and all that, but it's time you left. I'm not going anywhere quickly. I'm not going anywhere till I see you scared. Like you scared my son when you jumped him in a car park. You want to see me scared? Yes, I want to see you scared. Well, look at me. I'm absolutely terrified. Come on, Dad. It's going to take somebody bigger than you to scare me. Oh, really? Yeah, really. And today has got to be your lucky day because I'm going to cut you a deal. Walk away now. Because if you don't, you're not going to have legs to walk on. You can't be dressed. Is that a threat? Yes, that is a threat. You know, you really think you are a hard man, don't you? You go with what you're good at. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Sunbeam. You're not a hard man. You know what you are? You're a playground bully. You wouldn't have a rumble with anybody unless you had your mates with them. And not the truth, eh? Sticks and stones, Mr. MacDonald. Now your time's up. Get out of my... Make me get out of your flat! Come on! <laughs> well, who's acting hard now? Because I want to see just how good you are. I want to see if you've got the bottle to take me. Have you got the bottle? Do you want to know something? I think you're a big girl, Jez. I think you're a big girl's blood. Come on, then! Oh, I right, come on, then, Well, Jez. keep on talking, then! Me. Come you, on! I think you're a coward. You've got a streak. That way! Get! 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 up! Get! up! Get! 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 Mike, can I ask you something? Why not? You are my wife. Did you have second thoughts about marrying me? I thought so. No, well, didn't you? I mean, whichever way you look at it, it's a big step for both of us. We wouldn't be normal if we didn't think twice about it. So Roy Cropper was wrong then? We are normal. We both turned up, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Baldwin, what do you think of the earrings? Oh, the gorgeous Mike. Gina went green when she saw him. No regrets now. Oh, come on. We've only been married a couple of hours. Come here. No regrets, no doubts. It's all right, love. We're married. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I married you. Why? You've got class. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I should carry you over the threshold. What, with your back? He's steady on. There's still life in the old dog yet. Well, I should hope so. It is my wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya. Surprise. Well, what the flaming hell are you doing here? I'm afraid I've drunk all your champagne. But I suppose I should be saying congratulations, eh? 
Till I kiss the bride. Get off me. You selfish, ungrateful little... Mike, please, no. Is this what it was like before, eh? Is this why you and Gina were covering for him? Just let him go. What is wrong with you? I don't know, I'm drunk. What's wrong with you? Does that make you feel any better? Do you want another one? I don't care. The more, the merrier. I, I don't understand you. Yeah, well, don't worry about it, Dad. I don't understand me neither. Why did you do it? I mean, what was the point? The point? Yes, the point! You made a laughing stock of me out there. My friends, my work colleagues. You made me look a damn fool. Oh, but the thing is, Dad, what you don't realise is that you are a damn fool. No, you are the fool! You had everything! Anything you wanted, I gave you, and you blew it. Today you had everything and you just threw it away. You've no idea, have you? You really haven't got a clue. No. You think that you're a laughing stock? Do you want to know the biggest joke? The biggest joke in the world? The biggest joke is that me and your lovely wife here have been having an affair behind your back. He's drunk. Get out! And if all your friends and colleagues found out about that, that's when they'd be laughing at you. I said, get out! What is it? Do you not believe me? Then ask her. We were having sex in your precious little factory an hour before you asked her to marry you. So you see, Dad, you are the fool. And we made you the fool, me and her. What do you think we were doing on all those driving lessons? Why do you think I've kept running away? Why do you think that I couldn't stand next to you when you got married? I'm waiting. We never planned it. It just kind of happened. Right. Get out of the way, you. Dad, I'm sorry. You're... Mike, no. Mike, please. Leave him, Mike. Mike. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dad. I'd want to have done this banged up. I told you. I fell down. You fell down. Did anyone help you fall down? I don't remember. I'll tell you what. I'll go away and I'll file a report on your accidental fall downstairs. But you have a think, eh? Because maybe when painkillers wear off, your memory might come back. Come on. Drinking this since 10 o'clock this morning. <laughs> well, Adam Linda needed some Dutch courage. Hey, now, come on, spill the beans. What happened behind closed doors? My lips are sealed. Oh, mm. come on. I bet you know what happened tomorrow. Yeah, he was ill. Yeah, he looked ready to throw up when I was in him. <laughs> hey, hey, I'll tell you one thing, though. This morning when we were getting ready, Mike sent over this parcel for Linda. What, we're at? A bomb? No, it was the most gorgeous pair of sapphire earrings. Just perfect for going with dress. Mm. I don't know how he knew. Did you see him? Mm. I saw him. And he put this note in saying, thought you might need something blue. Oh, my love, Mike. Oh, it's dead romantic. Can you not tell us something bad? I hate it when Linda gets everything she wants. <laughs> I wonder if Linda and Mike have thought about having children. I mean, I know he's got more out, but she's still young. She might want children of her own, eh? I really don't think it's our place to speculate on other people's private lives. But, but yes, I suppose it is only natural to be modeling it. I even dream about it sometimes. Having a baby to look after, to hold. You know, you'd make a great dad. Well, I don't know about that, but it don't really matter, does it? Because it, it's not going to happen. It can't. I know, but I can't help the way I feel, can I? I'm 
just thought you're happy with me. I am happy with you. Of course I am. I shouldn't have said anything. And I'm just being silly, letting my feelings run away with me. Oh, you... <laughs> look at me. I love you. And nothing will ever change that. Yeah. Right. You sit down and shut up. You sit there. Now, I want to know everything. <laughs> what else do you need to know, Dad? Well, for starters, who else knows about this? Nobody knows. Nobody outside this room. Honest, Mike, we're not daft. We knew how upset you'd be if it ever got out. And we never wanted that. Did we? No. I thought I told you to be quiet. You, look at me. Now, I want the truth. I want to know everything that you two got up to behind my back. Dad, please. How many times did you do it and where? Oh, come on, I don't know. I wasn't counting. More than once? Yeah, a lot more than once. Where? Well, where do you think? In my flat? In the car? In my flat? Yeah. In my bed? What difference it... Mike! I love her! Do you think I'd do something like this to my own dad if I didn't love her? I mean, what kind of person do you think I am? I'm just beginning to find out. So why are you just looking at me? She feels the same. She loves me. And if it wasn't for you, then we'd be together now. No, we wouldn't. I thought me and you would split up. I was upset and confused. I made a mistake. A mistake? Yeah. A stupid mistake. So what, you, you just kept making that mistake again and again? I tried to end it loads of times. You wouldn't listen. You what? <laughs> you were the one keeping it going. You told me you loved me. Or was that just a lie? Was that just another one of your lies? You only hear what you wanna. I love Mike. I married Mike. I'm not gonna listen to this. If you wanna believe her lies, then you're an even bigger fool than I thought you were. Sit down. I said, I'm going. And I said, sit down. No one goes anywhere until I say so. Do you understand? What? Nothing. You're staring at me. Eat your beans. Four stories, but they gave in eventually. Tea's ready. Good all. I think we should tell him. Oh, yeah. Right. I know you're talking about me. Oh, big ears. Get that from me. Right. <sighs> um, we were wondering what you'd think if Gary and the twins came to live with us in Blackpool. It's too small. Well, We'll get a bigger place as soon as we can. So we're moving house? Well, yeah, maybe. But it doesn't mean you've got to move schools or lose your friends or anything. Right. Is that all right, then? Yeah, I suppose so, if you like. Well, that sounds like a vote of confidence to me. Are you sure you're happy about this? Yeah, I've finished. What's the pudding? Hi, Vic. Yeah, he's asleep. How's he doing? Has the doctor been around? Uh, no. But the coppers have. Oh, they know. Yeah. He sent them packing. Told me he fell down the stairs. Well, they don't need to worry their heads about this anymore. So did you go and see Jess? What happened? <sighs> Vic, that's a great wee car, so it is. Runs like a dream. What's up with your knuckles? I had a wee look under the bonnet, all right? I must have just scuffed him on something, all right? Being a bit clumsy. What happened? Do you know, he's got a bit more colour in him, so he has. Jim, did you see Jazz? Vic, look, don't ask the question, all right? Believe me, you don't want to know the answer, OK? So shut up. OK? Tell me, since you've been back, have I uh, done anything?
done anything wrong? Have I been a bad father? No. Or did I make you feel welcome, make you feel as if you belong, make you part of my life, part of my work? I mean, just remind me. Uh, did I tell you how much I thought about you, how I love being with you, how I love working with you? Did I, did I say how proud I was of you? Yeah, yeah, you've been great. Then what the hell gave you the idea you could sleep with my girlfriend? But she's not yours! Yes, she is! She is not yours, she is mine! As far as you are concerned, she's my girlfriend, my fiance, and my wife. And nobody, but nobody, messes with what's mine. You don't own people. You might think that you do, but you don't. You can't buy a son or a wife. I feel sick. Yeah, you're not the only one. Thank you. <laughs> I could get used to this. He makes a change to flimp eyes. Yes. What's happened to the happy couple? I mean, they'll be sat in the dancing suit. They've been there ages. How long does it take to get Jane's up? Haven't um, they got interrupted by desire? Hey, you don't think he's gone again? It's a strenuous business consummating a marriage. He might have had another dicky turn. Oh, don't be daft. I warned him. Listen. Why don't you go up and see what's taking them so long? Where? Well, Fred's right. They might be, you know, celebrating the nuptials. <laughs> I don't think it's that kind of marriage, is it? I mean, she's more likely checking out his crew.